Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, we'll be taking a look at CSS buttons, uh, this is also web buttons, in a bit more detail. So what you can do with Export Kit is basically create any type of button style or element for your web page. In this example, what we have is basic elements, which is a text layer and a shape layer for our background, and you can see these here. What we're going to do is first we want to basically convert these into an object and give them a container. In Export Kit, the fastest way to create a container is to simply group your elements. Uh, so this is just Control G, or you can actually just create a folder. And we just want to name this, so let's call it My Button per se. Now, if we were to export this as is, we would simply have the text and the shape. So let's just take a look at this in the output. There's not much we need to add. Um, this is including. Let's actually just update these really quick. Including uh, CSS images or layer effects, simply because this is a basic rendering of elements, and there are no effects that we have applied. So we can just go ahead and export this. Now, if we were to take a look at the actual output. you'll see that simply we have our two basic elements. So if we go back to our PSD, what we want to do per se now is basically add uh, some hover effects and uh, active effect or a click effect to this actual element. So what we need to do, and we didn't actually save it before, so let's just go ahead and save this again, my button. What we need to do first is basically add styles to this. So we're going to use a basic class of button and what we can do is now add a CSS style class so what we've done is we've given it a style name of button and you can note this here what we have to do in essence is create a style for the button but now we can actually control each element with this style applied now because our object has two elements within we also want to take control of each individual style for these elements also so we add another style tag to these now per se our text is actually our button label so let's just add a style for label and let's add another style for BG or background now what we can do is in our CSS folder our actual styles folder we can actually take control of each individual style now so we've taken our basic text and shape elements and we've added styles to these along with the style for our folder container so the next step we want to do is we want to actually create our CSS styles folder this is our grouping you'll note the difference that we have a styles pluralized versus an individual which is added to each each actual element so now if we go back to our styles folder what we can do now is we can actually take over each of these individual styles so we go ahead because button itself this is a grouping we can add another folder and we simply call this button so now all styles within this folder will apply so basically we have label and BG within one is a text and one is a shape so what we want to do is we want to reiterate these within the actual styles the fastest way to do this is you can simply just copy your layers or you can create new ones it's irrelevant the content that you have within so your text information will not get copied uh, only your actual styles and your effects that you have applied so what we can do is we can actually just copy these over so now these are generated within our actual styles. These will not be created in the output, so you will not get uh, duplicate elements. You will only have these created. So what we have now within our styles, we just want to remove the actual style tag previously, and we want to name these accordingly. So this is a label, so what we want to do is call this label. And this is the BG, so we just want to call this BG. Now, because this is our actual styles, um, let's say, for instance, we want on... Uh, let's say normal so whenever the actual class is called rather than red we want it to be green now you'll note that if we were to hide our styles our actual element is red but because we've denoted our BG here what will happen is that in the output this element when it's rendered by default will have a green background now let's say we wanted to add a hover state to this button so what we can do is we can actually just go ahead and duplicate this group and instead of button copy we just want to call this button hover 
Now this is our previous state. This is our default state. This is our hover state for when the user actually rolls over the button itself. So let's go ahead, let's change the background again. Um, let's give this a yellow background. Or yellowish, I guess. Uh, let's make the text. Now uh, let's add some effects to it. Let's give it a co color overlay. Let's make it red. And let's actually add some effects to this as well. Let's give this a drop shadow. And let's also give it a stroke. So this should actually emphasize each individual state a bit more. So now what we have, and let's just hide the effects, we have our hover state and we have our default state. And this is our button on its own. Now what we can also do is we can also add another state for when the user actually presses the element. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these over just so you can actually see each individual state on its own. Now it's irrelevant where you actually place this in your document simply because it will not be rendered in the output. So if you were to change the size or the position of it within your PSD it would not affect uh, the actual output itself. What it will do is it will actually just render the styles. So these elements will not be shown, only this. What we're going to do now is we're going to add an active state. So let's go ahead, let's copy it again. And let's add an active. So once more, let's just actually change these again slightly. Uh, let's make this black. Let's remove the layer effects. And let's actually remove the layer effects here again. Okay, and let's just slide this over just so we can actually see each of the button states. Uh. Okay, so now we have our, and let's actually label these. So this is our default. styles folder. This is our hover. And this is our press or active. Okay. And let's actually add a skip layer so this is not or a skip tag, sorry. So that way these labels will not be rendered in the output. So technically what you will see is only this actual element in the output itself. But what we've done is we've taken control of the different states of the element based on the styles that we've applied. So just to summarize before we export, we took our basic shape and text element, we added a folder, we gave that folder a style name of button, Within button itself, uh, because we have two individual elements, we gave one a style name of label and we gave another a style name of BG. This now gives us control within our actual CSS styles of the elements. So what we have is our default button state. We have our label and our BG. This is what you note within our green uh, background element and you'll see based on the titles. We also have our hover state, which is a uh, different text effect applied to the shape as well as text. And we have our active state. So now that we've taken control of these elements, if we go ahead and export this, what we want to do is we want to include layer effects at this point, simply because we've included them within the actual elements themselves. So we can go ahead and export. Now if we take a look at the output, we can just refresh the page simply because we're using the same PSD. Now you'll note that off the bat you see only the active state by itself and this is a simple error that we can go back and fix. What we have here is that we have the active state uh, basically denoted at the top so this will be the last uh, 
I would say rendering of CSS that's actually taken. What we can do is just reposition these and re export. Now, if we go back to the output, you'll see that we have our green text but we don't actually have our hover state so we can go back and we can fix this now the reason that our rollover state is not showing is simply because we do not have relative positions enabled now if we enable relative position our hover state will show and let's just actually export this just to illustrate there is one more error that we will encounter and this is because of a CSS rule with ordering of selectors and I'm just gonna illustrate this first and then go into a bit more detail with it afterwards so we if we take a look at the output now you'll see that now it's corrected for the default state and we also have our rollover state that we created but you'll see that when we click we don't actually get our active state so if we go back to the PSD again this is a CSS rule for layer ordering all we have to do is basically change the order of our selectors so move active above hover resave and re-export Now if we take a look at the output, refresh, you'll see we have our hover state and if we press we have our active state. So you can see that we can easily create different states for elements and in this case we created a button using export kit relatively quickly. So what we did was we at first created a shape and a text element. This is our default. We gave it a container, we added styles to those elements, we copied them into our actual styles folder just so we can actually denote how we want to control each individual state. So for the button, for the active, and for the hover. Now we could go into a bit more detail and we could have actually changed, you know, for instance, um, not both elements in the hover but only the background itself so it's completely up to you how you want to control the CSS styles uh, another feature that we have also is that we have direct selectors so for instance here we're calling button but let's say we had another class uh, per se this was text button now we could actually take control of text button individually along with button also. So export gives you complete control of your CSS elements and styling.